difference. And the the leaders or the to get into the finals, you had to go around that 1.2 kilometer track four times at absolute maximum. Day four, we saw five kilometers classic, five kilometers freestyle, and then the first of the days off. Another day of sprinting after the day off last Thursday, 1.2 kilometer in the freestyle this time, followed by the distance race, the 15 kilometer in Toblach, where it was freestyle and where Justina Kowalczuk uh, lost some 50 seconds to the fastest skating time of Mariana Longa. And then here we are today, the seventh day of racing, 10 kilometer in the classic technique with the bonus seconds, the all important 15, 10 and five second bonuses. And if you're not up the front, clearly you're not even putting yourself in the picture. How different the women's race is to the men's race. We had, uh, right the way through to 12 kilometers, we had a group of 25 men all together. I think it just shows the strength of Kowalczyk and at the moment, Therese Johaug in the women's field is quite a different story. Saarinen, she seems to be closing the gap. She was 10.9 seconds behind, in fact, probably just hanging on to that 10.9. Mariana Longa struggling to stay in contact with Saarinen. Beautiful technique there from Saarinen. She's only one meter 58, but her, the way she reaches forward with her legs and strides back, she covers so much distance. Therese Johaug, on the other hand, is all about <laughs> dynamic tempo. Just doesn't slow down at all during this 10 kilometers. So Saarinen and the double polling, double pole, single leg kicking now. Ah, oh, Petra Maric, Maric she's uh, just looking that little bit fatigued today, slowly being absorbed by some of the athletes, the other athletes closing in on her. Just try and pick up on some of the athletes there. That's Katrin Zeller, the first of the Germans. Bib 14. Britta Johansson Norgren from Sweden. And uh, they, well, there's Charlotte Kalla. I thought Charlotte Kalla might be able to stay with this pace, the early pace but clearly struggling today for Kala. She will be good tomorrow on the climb. And of course, it was back in uh, 2008 when Charlotte Kala, at the age of 20-year-old, won the overall Tour de Ski. But uh, not likely this year. Just looking at the journey which Kowalczyk has taken over the last four years. The first tour, she was 11th. The second tour, she was 7th, then 4th. And she won it last year, and she's looking like she's setting herself up for a two-in-a-row victory this time. So, Kowalczyk, yeah, sorry, Johau, Kowalczyk, Saarinen, the top three, but the further 10 seconds taken off Saarinen's time was 10.9 at 3.3 kilometers. Mariana Longa slipping badly, 27 behind. Marta Elden. 37 seconds and way to the right of our screen you can just see Petra Maric she can't go near the tracks because her skis are slipping back so she's having to go wide and you, sl you get slightly better purchase on the softer snow at the side of the tracks oh, and Charlotte Calla bib number four indicating she's fourth in the tour at the moment Leta Maki she was fifth then fourth and now down in 16th having a bad day at the races for uh, Latamaki. Fatigue has to be in everybody's body, but certainly for some of the younger athletes, even more so. Total, total concentration there from Charlotte Callot. So just over half distance and no change at the front. Oh, well, occasional changes at the front. Sometimes we see Therese at the front, Johaug from Norway, and then Justina Kowalczuk. But Justina will be lining herself up very, very soon for the second of the bonus points after another complete rotation into the stadium. I'm just looking at Therese Johaug, 2.59 behind at the beginning of the day. 
Well, she certainly can move up into from ninth place all the way up into fifth or fourth, and that really will set her in off in a good position tomorrow on the nine kilometer race, which finishes at the top of the huge alpine downhill section. Alp Charmise, an incredible finish to this eight days of intense racing where the tracks or the downhill slope will be lined with spectators. And well, a sign of respect for what these uh, women and men have been through over the last 10 days. Well, there's Petra Madic. She was leading the tour after this day last year. And by some 21 seconds into the final day last year, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the same on this, which could be her final tour de ski. Petra Maric really saying farewell to cross country at the end of this season. Mariana Longa, we saw her fall at the in the first couple of 100 meters. And you could just feel the, the spectators, the coaches willing her forward. But just a little tired today. So we're lining up for the final 300, 400 meters into the stadium. Now, if this is Justina, of course, it's Saren in, uh, in third place. Kowalczuk and Therese Johai have already gone past this point. Well, there we are, coming up to 200 metres to go once again. The arm power, the double pole strength of uh, Justina Kowalczuk. For the 6.6 kilometres, you can see Therese trying so hard, but not even having an effect uh, on the metres between them. In fact, she is. She's closing ever, ever so slightly, but I don't think so. Ah. Once again, Kowalczuk picking up another bonus of 15 seconds, which will be deducted by the end of the day. Ah, oh, she really is securing her lead now and making tomorrow well, something of a procession up Alp Shermis. Saarinen, it was 10.9 seconds. 3.3 kilometers ago, it's extending. Well, it'll be over. 30 for sure, maybe 35, 35.1 uh, seconds. It just shows the intensity up at the front there from Justina Kowalczuk. She's trying to win the tour on the second last day and just making it a procession tomorrow. Mariana Longa tucking quickly in behind Eldon's skis. Marta Eldon. Christofferson there, Ustberg, another Norwegian, but uh, Petra Maric hanging on in there, but it's it's very tough for the Slovenian. Body looks extremely tired. And she did say that she would suffer from the sprint races. Once again, confirmation, Justina Kowalczuk, 15 seconds. Therese Johaug, once again, the 10 seconds. And once again, Saarinen, five second bonus. And this is how Justina put it together. Well, the day off, the rest day yesterday, certainly Kowalczuk looked to me a little unstable as we see her virtual lead, 1.44 ahead now. At the beginning of the day, it was only 27 seconds. Well, now closing in to the final stages, about three kilometers to go in this 10 kilometer Mass Start Classic race, second last day on the Tour de Ski. And Therese Johaug trying so hard to give herself a chance tomorrow on Alp Charmise. Nine kilometers freestyle. And Therese Johaug, one of the lightest athletes in the field of 39, trying to set herself up for an attack tomorrow to try and move closer and closer to the podium. Well, what a turnaround in performances today. Kowalczuk only led by 27.2 seconds ahead of Ariana Follis, who's now 
in sixth position, but 52 seconds behind, and that isn't taking the 30 seconds bonus, which Kowalczyk has just won herself into account. And Mariana Longa, who were just uh, just tucked in there behind Saarinen. Mariana Longa was 32 seconds behind, but, well, it's a huge margin now, over two minutes behind. And the Norwegian coach is just uh, trying to give Therese Johaug some more push. Now, Therese really wants to place herself, I would say, some 40 metres ahead of Kowalczuk in the final 200 metres if she safely wants to take the final bonus sprint to take the victory in this race. Look at the different tempo there, the super strong stomach and upper body and arms of Kowalczyk compared to the incredible tempo there from Therese Johaug. And Kowalczyk has quite a team supporting her, three wax technicians, one coach, one doctor and one coach. And really, that's what you need at this level to make sure that your equipment glides as fast or equally as glide as anyone else in the race. And, uh, of course, recovery is so important. Massage is also so important, especially with such intense races here. Sprint races, distance races, it's amazing. In his fifth year now, the Tour de Ski, and I think it really has lifted the profile of cross-country skiing. And especially in tomorrow's event, the men's and the women's, well, the men is over 10 kilometers freestyle up uh, to the top of Alpshermies. And it, it is, and it will be the most viewed cross-country race of the whole season. Culmination of 10 days of racing, well, eight days of racing over 10 days and uh, a lot of traveling in between. Marta Eldon alongside Mariana Longa with Saarinen fading twice. She crossed the halfway or the, the lap line and in third place. Follis was 52 seconds. She seems to have found something special, some the extra energy from somewhere. Ariana Follis moving forward. Baby Levin just gone past. Marta Christofferson. And you can just see the, the pain, the reach of Petra Manic leg, she's trying to extend forward to get more grip through these skis. Clister, a few of the athletes on silver clister in these warm conditions. Three degrees the air temperature, zero degrees the snow temperature. And when you don't get such good perches as we saw there with Teresio Howe, then you have to change something or you'll keep on slipping back. So she darted out of the tracks into the softer snow and she got some perches, head down, attack mode. The face just looks so relaxed but so focused. Well, Teresa Johau, what can she do to beat Kowalczuk? Look at the gap they now have. This is unusual. Huge gap back to third place. Mariana Longa, Marta Eldon, almost side by side. Marta slipping into the herringbone run, using the edges of the skis. There's Saarinen trying so hard to hold on to this incredible pace. Look at the gap. Joha Kowalczuk working together almost, or pushing each other on at the front, and absolutely destroying the rest of the field. And these are some big names in cross-country skiing that they're destroying out here by almost a minute, 57.2 seconds back to Mariana Longa, Marta Eldon, 59, Saarinen must just be over one minute, yes, one minute, three seconds, Follis, bib number two, well, she may well lose the bib number two today, given the fact that she hasn't picked up on any of the bonus seconds, but she will certainly look at tomorrow and will believe that she can move herself forward again. Petra Maric to the right of the screen, almost walking, just trying to get some purchase through her skis, gasping for air and slipping. Johansson, Norgren, 
ahead of Kala. You can see Kala, three athletes behind. Yak 